thank you very much. It's a great honor to be with the Crown Prince of Bahrain. He is a friend of mine, and uh, the country is a friend of ours. We're always going to be with them, and I know they're always going to be with us. We have a tremendous relationship militarily, but we have also a tremendous economic relationship, trade, uh, and we're going to be discussing all of those things. We'll certainly be discussing what took place over the last two days in Saudi Arabia. Absolutely and uh, we'll be discussing the Middle East. But our relationship has never been stronger than it is right now, and I think that is largely based on the relationship that we have. So I look forward to having our discussion. Thank you, Mr. Thank President. You. It's thank a great pleasure much. to be here. Would like to say something? Well, I would like to say thank the President for receiving me and my delegation uh, here today. I'm here to convey the greetings of His Majesty and the people of Bahrain to strengthen the relationship, which is based on shared values, where they overlap, and uh, ideals. We primarily, as the President said, are going to focus on discussions related to security enhancement and trade enhancement. We signed today a agreement to purchase additional or to purchase our first uh, Patriot missile battery systems, right. and it couldn't have come at a better time. Good timing. Absolutely. And we, we seek to strengthen America's ability to trade with the world, and we have some concrete ideas on how we can do that. Well, thank you very much. Thank I look you, forward Mr. to the day and spending time with you. And thank you all very much. I'll be doing a news conference outside in a little while, just prior to the trip. We're going to New Mexico and to other places uh, for two and a half days, and many of you will be with us, and I look forward to that. But in particular, I look forward to our meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Well, it's looking that way. We'll have some pretty good uh, uh, we're having some very strong studies done, but it's certainly looking that way at this moment, and uh, we'll let you know. As soon as we find out definitively, we'll let you know, but it does look that way. Do I want war? I don't want war with anybody. I'm somebody that would like not to have war. We have the strongest military in the world. We've spent more than a trillion and a half dollars in the last short period of time on our military. Nobody's even come close. We have the best equipment in the world. We have the best missiles. And as you say, you just bought the Patriot system. There's nothing even close. Uh, but uh, no, I don't want war with anybody, but we're prepared more than anybody. Uh, two and a half years ago, I will tell you, it was not the same thing. And with what we've done, we've totally rebuilt our military in so many different ways, but we've rebuilt it. and. Uh, there's nobody that has the F-35. We have the best fighter jets, the best rockets, the best missiles, the best equipment. Uh, but with all of that being said, we'd certainly like to avoid it. What are the options, Mr. President? What are the options if not a military? Well, we have a lot of options, but uh, I'm not looking at options right now. We want to find definitively who did this. Uh, we're dealing with Saudi Arabia. We're dealing with the Crown Prince and so many other of your neighbors. And we're all talking about it together. We'll see what happens. Is it the responsibility of Saudi Arabia to present Rouhani in New York as it was uh, stipulated that you might say it? When you still meet with President Rouhani in Iran? Well, I have no meeting scheduled. I know they want to meet. I know they're not doing well as a country. Iran has got a lot of problems right now that uh, two and a half years ago, and even a little bit more than that when I came in, it's hard to believe. It's almost three years. But two and a half to three years ago, they were causing a lot of trouble, and we'll see what happens. But uh, we'll let you know definitively. Or there, as you know, there are ways to uh, see definitively where they came from, and we have all of those ways, and that's being checked out right now. But are you still willing to meet with the Iranians without preconditions? Well, you know, there were always conditions, because the conditions, if you look at it, the sanctions are not going to be taken off. So if the sanctions, that's a condition. So, you know, that's why the press misreported it. Uh, the biggest thing you can talk about are the sanctions, and the sanctions are massive. There's never been sanctions put on a country like that, and I think they have a tremendous future, but not the way they're behaving. We'll see what happens in terms of this attack. Uh, Secretary Pompeo and others will be going over to Saudi Arabia at some point to discuss what they feel they're going to make a statement fairly soon. Uh, but they also know something that most people don't know as to where it came from, who did it, and we'll be able to find that out and figure that out very quickly. We pretty much already know. Is the President much already prepared for a war? war? Say it? You said the United States is prepared for a war? Uh, the United States is more prepared than any country in the history 
of, of in any history if we have to go that way. Uh, as to whether or not we go that way, we'll see. We have to find out definitively who did it. Uh, we have to speak to Saudi Arabia. They have to have a lot of uh, — they have to have a lot in the game also, and you know they're willing to do that. Uh, I think everybody knows they're willing to do that. So we'll be meeting with Saudi Arabia. We'll be talking to Saudi Arabia. We'll be talking to UAE and many of the neighbors out there that we're very close friends with. We're also talking to Europe, a lot of the countries that we're dealing with, whether it's France, Germany, et cetera. Uh, talking to a lot of different folks, and we're figuring out what they think. But I will tell you, that was a very large attack, and it could be met with an attack many, many times larger very easily by our country. But we're going to find out who definitively did it first. Can we clarify, Mr. President, when you said that you think that Iran is responsible for the attack, do you think that I, I didn't attack, say that. I, why do you, you say that? I said, said that, that we think, think we know who it was, but I didn't say anybody. But you, you uh, certainly it would look to most like it was Iran, but I did not say it the way you said. Go yeah, ahead. Do you think it was launched from Iran? That's the second question. You're going to find out in great detail in the very near future. We have the exact locations of just about everything. You're going to find out at the right time, but it's too early to tell you that now. Do you want to do more with Iran to help cushion the oil prices that are rising now? Well, they haven't risen very much, and we have these strategic oil reserves, which are massive, and we can uh, release a little bit of that. and. Uh, other countries, including Bahrain, but other countries can be a little bit more generous with the oil, and you'd bring it right down. So, no, that's not a problem. It went up $5, and uh, that, that is not a problem. Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, and you have to remember, we're now the largest uh, producer of oil and gas in the world. So a lot of people in the old days, and this happened over the last very short period of time, uh, were number one in the world by far. Yes, you uh, right? are. By far. So. Uh, I never want to be benefited that way. But the fact is, uh, there are those that say, we benefit. I don't view that as a benefit. But we are certainly uh, — we take in more money than anybody else from energy, not even close. Mr. President, do you still think it's the responsibility of the Saudis to defend themselves? Oh, I think — I think it is certainly the responsibility of them to do a big — a big deal of their defense, certainly. Uh, I also think it's the responsibility of the Saudis to — uh, if somebody like us, which are the ones, uh, are going to help them, uh, they — I know that monetarily will be very much involved in paying for that. This is something that's much different than other presidents would mention, John. But the fact is that the Saudis uh, are going to have a lot of uh, involvement in this if we decide to do something. Uh, they'll be very much involved, and that includes payment, and they understand that fully. But they're going to be uh, — look, they're very upset. They're very angry. Uh, they know pretty much what we know. They know pretty much where they came from. And we're looking for the final checkpoints. And I think you won't be surprised to see who did it. We'll be discussing it, yeah. We'll be discussing it. Well, we're going to see what — I mean, it's the elections on Tuesday. So, uh, like tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> so you have an election tomorrow. So I, I would think it would be afterwards, okay? But we, uh, you do have an election, big, big election tomorrow in Israel, and uh, that'll be a very interesting outcome. It's going to be close. It's going to be a close election. But I mean, also the Germans can't invite you to North Korea. Like I don't want to comment on that. Okay. The relationship is very good, but I don't want to comment on that. To I just don't think it's appropriate for me to comment. Would you be willing to go to North Korea? Probably not. I don't think it's ready. I don't think we're ready for that. I would do it sometime, at some time in a later future. Uh, and depending on what happens, I'm sure he'll love coming to the United States also. But, uh, no, I don't think it's ready for that. I think we have a ways to go yet. you stand with the auto workers in the strike against GM? Well, I have great relationship with the auto workers. I got tremendous numbers of votes from the auto workers. Uh, I don't want General Motors to be building plants outside of this country. As you know, they built many plants in China and Mexico, and I don't like that at all. Uh, my relationship has been very powerful with the auto workers, uh, not necessarily the top person or two, but the people that work uh, doing automobiles. Nobody's ever brought more uh, companies into the United States. You know, I have Japan and Germany, and many countries have been bringing car companies in and opening plants and expanding plants. and. 
Big things are happening in Ohio, including with Lordstown. Very positive things are happening. Uh, we have many plants that are either being renovated or expanded or built new right now in the United States. Many more than we've had for decades and decades. So nobody's been better to the auto workers than me. I'd like to see it work out, uh, but I don't want General Motors building plants in China and Mexico. This was before my watch, and I don't think they'll be doing that. I don't think. I had uh, meetings with Mary Barra, the head of GM, and I don't want them leaving our country. I don't want them building in China. I don't want to build them in other countries. I don't want uh, these big, massive auto plants built in other countries. And I don't think they'll be doing that anymore. You know, General Motors makes most of its money in the United States. And it's too bad they spent billions and billions of dollars outside of the United States before I got here. Uh, one of the things very important in the USMCA, which we have to have approved for the, not only for the unions, for the auto workers, but for the farmers and for the manufacturers, for everybody. Everybody wants USMCA. It's very important, even more so now than it was two weeks ago. Uh, but people really want it. I'm sad to see the strike. Hopefully, it's going to be a quick one. No, it's never exhausted. In fact, uh, the Crown Prince can tell you, especially in your part of the world, it's never exhausted until the final 12 seconds. Is that right? That is correct. It, you never know what's going to happen. No, it's not exhausted. Nothing's exhausted. We'll see what happens. I think they would like to make a deal. I know they'd like to make a deal. They'd like to do it, but they'd like to do it on certain terms and conditions, and we won't do that. But at some point, it will work out, in my opinion. Uh, the, the problem was the deal that was signed by the previous administration was a disaster, which, by the way, would be expiring in a very short period of time also. So you, you really don't have a deal. You know, that deal was a very short-term deal. So they made a deal, but it was for a very short period of time. So that deal would be expiring very soon. Yes? Um, are, are you encouraging Israel and the Saudis to work together on this issue, particularly since they have Always. I encourage goal. everybody. I want everybody to work together. The Middle East is an interesting place. <laughs> they uh, historically have not been working together too well. But, no, Israel is starting to work together with a lot of countries that you wouldn't have thought possible two years ago. Yes, have you, have you promised the Saudis that the U.S. will protect them? In this no, I haven't. No, I haven't. I haven't promised the Saudis that. We have to sit down with the Saudis and work something out. And uh, the Saudis want very much for us to protect them. But I say, well, we have to work. That was an attack on Saudi Arabia. And uh, that wasn't an attack on us. But we would certainly help them. They've been a great ally. They spend $400 billion in our country over the last number of years. $400 billion. That's a million and a half jobs. Uh, and they're not ones that, unlike some countries, where they want terms. They want terms and conditions. They want to say, can we borrow the money at 0 percent for the next 400 years? No. No. Saudi Arabia pays cash. They've helped us out from the standpoint of jobs and all of the other things. And they've actually helped us. I would call and I would say, listen, our oil prices, our gasoline's too high. you got to let more go. You know that. I would call the Crown Prince mm -hmm. and I'd say, uh, you got to help us out. you got to get some more. And all of a sudden, the oil starts flowing and the gasoline prices are down. No other president can do that. No other president was able to do that. Or maybe they didn't try. But I've done it. So now they're under attack, and we uh, will work something out uh, with them. But they also know that, you know, the, I'm not looking to get into new conflict, but sometimes you have to. Mr. President, well, what's your message to Iran right now? Excuse me? What's your message to Iran right now? I think uh, I'll have a stronger message, or maybe no message at all, uh, when we get the final results of what we're looking at. But right now, it's too soon to say. There's plenty of time. You know, there's no rush. We're going to all here, be here a long time. There's no rush. But I'll have a message, uh, whether it's a strong message or maybe no message at all, depending on the final results. How can you about the risk of an all-out war in the Middle East? I'm not concerned at all. You don't think that we're a step closer to that? No, I'm, I'm not. States? Personally, I'm not concerned at all. We have, we have military power the likes of which the world has never seen. I'm not concerned at all. I'd like to avoid it. You know, when I came here, three years ago almost, General Mattis told me, sir, we're very low on ammunition. 
I said, that's a horrible thing to say. I'm not blaming him. I'm not blaming anybody, but that's what he told me. Because we were at a position where, with a certain country, I won't say which one, we may have had conflict. And he said to me, sir, uh, if you could, delay it, because we're very low on ammunition. And I said, you know what? General, I never want to hear that again from another general. No president should ever, ever hear that statement. We're low on ammunition. And we now have more ammunition, more missiles, more rockets, more tanks, more — we have more of everything that we've ever had before, more jet fighters. When I came here, 50 percent of our jet fighters didn't fly. You know that. And they were in bad shape. And now we have the best fighters in the world. Everybody wants to buy them. Are you buying our jet fighters? We are, sir. Which one? We have 16. That's great. Signed no? it here. And you have good taste. Thank you, sir. That's a great one. So uh, we are uh, very high on ammunition now. That's a story I've never told before. Breaking news. But we, had, we were very low. I, I could even say it stronger. I don't want to say no ammunition, but that gets a lot closer. Uh, I said, I never want to hear that again, and I never want another President of the United States to hear that again. Could you imagine, as President, when they say we're very low on ammunition? By the way, stronger than that, but I'm not going to go there. That was what I was told. And I said, I never want to be on, in a position like that again. And he said, could you delay, if we do something, sir, could you delay it as we fill up? And that is what I inherited from the past administration, and in all fairness to President Obama, two administrations before President Obama. That's what I got stuck with. And we fixed it, and we fixed it good. Uh, the Crown Prince understands 700 billion the next year, $718 billion. And the next year, which is right now, we just got approved $738 billion. And that's a lot of money even for Bahrain, right? That's a lot of money, That's a sir. lot even for Bahrain. That's and Bahrain has a lot of money. <laughs> okay? Is there the Israeli election coming up tomorrow, how does that affect the timing of your Middle East peace plan? Well, we're going to have to see what happens, Steve. I just don't know. I can't tell you what's going to happen. I, I can make a prediction. I sort of have a feeling. but. But uh, we're going to have to see what happens. It's a big election. That's one we're all going to be watching. Well, certainly he has a good chance. But it's a very, you know, it's a 50-50 election. A lot of people, if you look at the polls and everything else, it's going to be very close. So we'll see what happens. Polls, polls are often wrong. They now call for annexing all settlements in the West Bank. Is that something that your government would do? Yeah, I don't want to talk about that, but certainly it's something we uh, we're told about that they'd like to do, but no, I don't want to be talking about that. It's President too soon. Governor, can you tell elaborate a little bit on why the decision was taken yesterday to release the strategic reserves? Why did you decide right away to Well, do just that? in case we ran a little bit low on oil, we have so much with the strategic reserves. Plus, uh, being the number one producer, we can fill them up very quickly, very, very quickly. And one of the things I'm doing also is I'm approving the pipelines in Texas. We have a tremendous pipeline system that's being held up by various agencies for a very good reason, for going through the normal process. And we're going to have to avoid the normal process, because if we do that, Texas is a massive distributor, a massive producer of oil, far bigger than anybody would have even thought five years ago. So what I'm going to do is expedite the pipeline approvals. That will get us another 25 percent uh, energy, additional energy, I know this is exactly the opposite of the Democrats. They want to have wind, solar, and uh, I guess make-believe would be the third alternative, right? Uh, no, this is uh, something we have to do. We have the greatest wealth in the world, and we want to be able to capitalize on it, especially when it comes to safety. Okay? Thank you all very much. Thank you. You talk about an urban agenda when you ran for president the first time. You went to Baltimore last year. Yeah. Well, I think what I've done for the inner cities is more than any president has done for a long time. We've created opportunity zones. In fact, I did that with Tim Scott, who you know very well, who's, I think, a tremendous guy. Uh, it was his initiative, and he came to see me. Uh, they're having a tremendously positive impact on the inner cities, including Baltimore, including a lot of other cities that you wouldn't necessarily think. Oakland, California, is an example. We're having tremendous success in the inner cities because of the Opportunity Zones. 
uh, criminal justice reform. I was the one that got it. Nobody else. I mean, we had people that helped, but a group of extremely liberal Democrats came to the office and they said, we cannot get it. President Obama was unable to get it, as you know. Uh, President Bush, uh, they were all unable to get it, and I got it. And I got it with some very conservative senators and people that wanted it to happen, and nobody else could have done it. And it's sort of interesting because they don't like mentioning my name, although uh, I guess now people are understanding. But we got it. We got it done. We formed a coalition with some very conservative people, as you know, and some uh, people that are very far left. And we did a thing called criminal justice reform, something that nobody thought — the Crown Prince uh, has seen this — nobody thought this could possibly happen. And I'm very proud of criminal justice reform. So we did that. We did the Opportunity Zones and a lot of other things. Our job numbers for African Americans are the best in history. You saw the new ones came out. They're even better than they were two months ago. Uh, Hispanic, the best in history. Asian, the best in history. Overall, they're phenomenal, the best in 51 years, and I think we'll soon be historic on that one, too. Uh, the economy is doing great, and that's the best thing I can do. Did you look at Baltimore when you flew over? Did you see? No, when I drove through, I looked at it. We flew over, but we also know you have some sections that uh, need a lot of help. And, you know, what people don't know, I had a great meeting with Elijah Cummings in this office very early in my tenure, and it was a meeting on drug prices. And I saw him get emotional talking about drug prices, seriously emotional. And I was really impressed. He cared about it. And I would certainly be willing to meet with uh, Elijah and other people if they'd like. But I saw the emotion and the feeling that he had for reducing drug prices. And we've worked hard, and we've actually had the first year in 51 years where prices went down. But we can get them down much further if we can get the help from Congress. So I think we're going to do much lower drug prices over the next year. And I think that if Elijah Cummings would want help, uh, I am here. But I did see him at a moment that was actually, I thought, a very beautiful moment. I've talked about it often, because I see the political rhetoric every once in a while. And I said, that's not the same guy I had in my office. That was a very caring man that wanted to see drug prices lower. And he, and he wanted that for the community, for his community. So, I look forward to working with Elijah, but I look forward to working with a lot of people. But I think Opportunity Zones have been tremendous for the inner cities, and uh, criminal justice reform is something we're very proud of. Thank you all very much. Thank, Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I don't think I have to do outside now, do I? Do I have to do outside? Can I go directly? <laughs> Can I go directly to the helicopter now? Huh? I'll stop by. I'll stop by, Sam. Thank you.